I'd like to, uh, both Fern and I will make a few remarks, but I'd like to start by asking for approval of the agenda. Would somebody make a motion to approve it? Thank you. Seconder? Glenda? All in favor? Great. Thank you. Uh, any uh, conflict of interest, if anyone would declare any conflict of interest? And with that. Uh, all right, first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Anybody seen the minutes? Could I get a motion from Marlis? And Brenda? Any comment on the minutes as there? No? All right, all in favor? All right. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for those of you who are here for taking time to join the meeting. Uh, I think it's important you're all here because Alberta's healthcare system doesn't actually belong to the board or to AHS, but it, it belongs to all Albertans, so we're happy to see people showing interest in AHS, being here today and listening in across the province. Um, you know, it's the interest that everybody has in AHS that I think it makes me and most of my fellow board members pretty optimistic about, uh, about AHS as we finish just our second month as board members. Um, we've had a lot of transitions in those two months. Establishment of the board and all that entails, uh, and we're not finished setting up our government standards but, and practices. Also the departure of our CEO. So we've had a lot of transitions in this, in this first two months. But you know, these changes have been absorbed by HS very smoothly, and I think that's made all of us feel heartened about what a strong organization it really is with a very, a very deep pool of experienced and dedicated healthcare workers. And we are particularly fortunate to have a, a healthcare leader like uh, Dr. Verna Yu take on the role of interim president and CEO. Uh, I've had time, and other board members have, uh, to spend with Verna over the last uh, few weeks, and specifically, what is it, 14 days or something like that, um, and uh, to see what an outstanding leader she is and what a great ambassador for AHS. Uh, Verna is a great people person, a great listener. She's a consensus builder. She's experienced and wise, empathetic. Uh, in many ways, I think she embodies exactly the kind of culture we want for AHS. So I want to say thank you again to Verna publicly for taking on the role and for the strong leadership she showed already just in a couple of weeks. Uh, the board members and I have also had the pleasure of meeting many of our executive team leaders over the last few weeks. Some of them are here today. And they are all equally impressive. Uh, they care deeply about health care. They work very long hours. I can tell you that I'm in the office and they work very long hours, nights and weekends. And, um, and many of them, like Verna, who's a pediatric nephrologist, uh, continue to do clinical work in addition. So they are a really impressive group. Um, and I think they are the people, we've talked a lot, of course, about change and flux in AHS and uh, changes in leadership at the top, but these people are providing the leadership in the organization. And the feedback we have been getting is that people do feel that there is stability because of these very strong people at the top. And AHS does continue to work on the plans it's had in place for some time, working to foster a, a, an environment that's positive and patient-focused putting a, an environment in place that puts patients, families, and clients at the center of everything and involving them in the decisions about care and trying to build an environment that is uh, safe for staff where volunteers and patients, physicians feel supported and valued at work and valued in the sense that they can do their best work. Um, I think I'm optimistic about, the, uh, about AHS and all the board feels this way because of this leadership that we have here. Stability, it seems to me, it is a byproduct of good governance. That's why we've got the board in place. But good governance isn't just about the bylaws and the committee structures and the various mandate documents we're working on. It does require, I think, strong leaderships that are built on trust and honesty. In this case, obviously, it's the relationships between the board, the leadership, the Ministry of Health, the provincial government, staff, physicians, labor groups, regulatory bodies, universities and colleagues, foundations, and community and business partners. There are so many stakeholders involved, and it's important to have good relations with all of them. And I think we do. I think we do have very productive relationships. Uh, and we're really confident that Verna and her team will continue to grow those relationships. Um, and the board will be part of building that, that process. I think I can say that 
just two months in, uh, relations with the health ministry, for example, are good, and they are improving all the time. And Vern is working closely with the Deputy Minister of Health to ensure that AHS and the ministry are working effectively and productively and efficiently to improve the healthcare system. I think that relationship is really important, and Verna is working hard to improve those. Meanwhile, the board is working on establishing its governance structures, uh, its committees in the area of quality and safety, finance, audit, and risk, and governance. Um, we've also, I can say, uh, those of you who don't know, we have hired an executive search firm. It's Boyden out of its Calgary office to begin the search for a new CEO. Uh, this kind of search for a senior health leader uh, to run the largest health region in the country will will be a big job and it will take some time, but we would hope we could have a new CEO in place by mid-year. So thank you again for coming, and uh, I now like to ask Verna to take over. I'll turn off my button, you turn on yours, and talk a little bit about her first three weeks on the job. Thanks. Great, thanks very much, Linda, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, before I give my overview, I just, on behalf of all of us in AHS, we really want to thank Linda and the board. Um, I think it's been an absolute pleasure for us to get to know you over the past few weeks and two months. Uh, but more importantly, I think we really appreciate the diversity of your background and your experience. It's just been invaluable um, hearing your input. So on behalf of all of us, I really want to thank you for your commitment and dedication to healthcare in Alberta. So this is my first um, AHS board meeting as as interim president and CEO for Alberta Health Services. And I wanted to share with you some of the highlights um, that I've experienced in the past uh, two and a half weeks, not quite three. Um, first and foremost, I believe healthcare is very much a people business. And, it, and in fact, people are our greatest asset. And that's why I thought it was really important for me to really be out um, and visiting as many places as I can. So in my first 48 hours on the job, um, I went to Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, Brooks, Calgary, Calgary again, and obviously I'm, I'm situated here in Edmonton. And what was very gratifying for me in the first two days was really to see the people's passion uh, when they were providing health care. And I met many, many people who have a lot of pride in what they do um, and who shared their experiences with me and, and trying to give me some, I think, some advice about what we do need to do in order to make things better. So, for example, when I was touring the uh, Peter Law Heat Center. Welcome to Unified Conferencing. So, when I was uh, touring the psychiatric unit at the Peter Law Heat Center, um, for example, they were giving me some advice about how we can actually improve uh, things for persons with developmental disabilities. How do we actually keep them in the communities and, and not have them be in, in places like hospitals, which is probably not the best, best place of care for them. Um, at several stops, I had the opportunity to take questions from other staff, physicians, and volunteers, and it's been a bit of a whirlwind tour, but this is what I've heard. And what I've heard is that many have said that they thought HS is moving in the right direction. They hoped for continuity and not instability. They agreed that our organization's focus on patient and family-centered care is very important. And they want to see themselves as being part of an organization where quality and safety is at the forefront along with patients as being part of the healthcare team. And in addition to doing that, HS needs to build a culture where not only is there a high level of workforce engagement, but where our staff, physicians, and volunteers feel, sa will feel safe, valued, and supported. They want clarity on our uh, vision, mission, values, goals, and priorities, and they want to see the bigger picture and how they fit in. And finally, many people I met just wanted to wish, wish me well, or better yet, they, to wish me luck. One of the people that I met that was quite memorable for me was a woman actually at the Peter Law Heat Center um, who was a service worker, and I was just walking in the hallway with you know, an entourage, uh, taking a look at the crowded hallways. And I just stopped and said hello to her. Her name was Aurora Cassiano. And I introduced myself to her and I asked her, well, how long have you been working in healthcare and, and Alberta Health Services? And she got kind of emotional and a little bit teary-eyed and she said, uh, 15 years. And what I saw out of her was that I saw a level of commitment and dedication uh, and pride. She was very proud of actually sharing with us the amount of time that she spent working in healthcare. And, 
And, you know, Aurora was obviously very pleased um, to meet all of us. And, you know, I was very pleased, obviously, to meet her and, and was very proud of actually the, the emotions that she was sharing with us. So for me, it really doesn't matter whether you work in IT or HR or corporate services. It doesn't matter if you're a physician or admin assistant, an environmental staff member. As far as I'm concerned, everyone in Alberta Health Services contributes meaningfully in the develop, delivery of safe, high quality patient care. We all know of a famous quote that says, may we live in interesting times. And we certainly do right now in Alberta. Uh, I don't need to remind everyone that oil prices are at an all time low and the Canadian dollar is barely hanging in there at 70 cents to the US dollar. And we know that we have the highest cost of healthcare in Canada uh, with average health outcomes. But what I do know is that there are incredible opportunities in Alberta that no other province has uh, and things that we can do in Alberta that no other province can do. And what we can do here is that we can implement and spread broadly key initiatives that improve not only patient outcomes, but also the patient experience. And fundamentally, we all know that when we improve the quality of care, that it results in improved costs. And these initiatives are successful because they involve collaboration between people who perform very differently but very important jobs in the health system. So what I want to do is to tell you about one of them, and it's called Enhanced Recovery After Surgery, also known as ERAS. It was first introduced in 2013 at the Grey Nuns Community Hospital in Edmonton and the Peter Lougheed Centre in Calgary. And essentially, this is a program for patients that are undergoing colorectal cancer surgery. And since then, more than 2,200 patients have benefited from ERAS protocols, which are now available at six AHS hospitals. So how does it work? ERAS provides consistent ways of managing care before, during, and after surgery with an aim of helping patients stay strong physically and mentally, improving recovery time and reducing complications. So we know that pre-surgery, ERAS encourages patients to participate in activities that manage um, their wellness and educates them on pain and nausea management. Then the surgical teams use minimally invasive techniques when appropriate to reduce surgical stress and improve pain control. And after surgery, we know that patients recover faster, including earlier removal of catheters, they eat earlier, and they feel better. And what we're seeing is truly remarkable. So ERAS patients are going home sooner they're returning to their families and working 2.3 days sooner on average. That's freed up more than 3,000 days of bed capacity, easing pressures on our acute care centers. We're seeing 11% fewer complications and fewer readmissions back into hospitals. So what do patients and clinicians think? And what we wanted to do is to share with you a video of how a patient talks about his involvement with ERAS and how one of the physicians actually talks about benefits to the health system. And this will run about 90 seconds. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Nelson. I am the surgical lead for ERAS Alberta. Hi, my name is Gary Laxtall. I'm a 53-year-old resident here in Calgary. And last June, I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer doing a routine colonoscopy. So I, I was devastated. Here I was, I've been healthy all my life. I've never had any surgery, never any medical problems at all. Two weeks prior to my surgery in November, I was asked if I would like to be part of the ERAS program. I said, tell me about it. All that was required was uh, continuing my exercise routine of walking six to eight kilometers a day and slightly changing my diet to increase my carbohydrate intake. We are getting them up uh, and mobilizing, exercising after surgery. We are feeding them sooner so uh, they're feeling better after their surgery. Immediately post-surgery, I felt great. In fact, I made a joke to my wife, this wasn't so bad, I don't know what all the fuss was about. I was back up on my feet the evening of my surgery. I was discharged six days after my surgery, after expecting to be in the hospital from seven to 21 days. That although patients go home sooner, there are fewer complications and there are less readmissions associated with ERAS pathways. I felt fabulous. I was in great spirits, great health. In fact, I would have gone home on day five if they would have let me. The surgeon, the anesthesiologist, and the nurse are coming together as a team to make the patient do better after surgery and get improved outcomes. I felt then, before, and now I've always received exceptional patient care from Alberta Health Services. 
So as you can see, ERAS um, is really a win-win for everyone. Uh, we are known in Alberta to be a global leader in re ERAS rollout. We know it's good for patients and it's good for the health system. It's tested, proven to work, and it's made possible by a team of local clinicians uh, making grassroots driven changes based on best practices. And because AHS is provincial, we're able to expand this best practice across Alberta so that all Albertans can benefit. ERAS is proof of something that I truly believe in, which is that by focusing on evidence-based best, best practices, we are improving the quality of healthcare to Albertans, which is followed very closely with reduction in costs. And to be the best healthcare system we can be and good stewards of taxpayer dollars, we are always on the journey of continuous improvement. So now, more than ever, AHS is moving into a time of financial pressure, unprecedented really in this history. But with projects like ERAS, we can continue to bend our cost curve by using quality improvements to get the most of our resources. This is but one example of innovations coming out of collaborations and teamwork between our clinicians and operations along with our strategic clinical networks. Our people are absolutely passionate and knowledgeable about health and they are finding new and innovative ways of delivering health care. That's what I saw and heard during my tour visits. So despite the tough economic times we find ourselves in, I remain very optimistic about healthcare in Alberta. Having a provincial healthcare system gives us a landscape that is unique in Canada to collaborate, to share best practices, and to drive innovation that improves quality and value for all. I encourage you to visit our AHS website to read more about other projects happening across the province, and we will address our challenges by continuously finding new and better ways to deliver care. So, thank you. Does anyone have any questions, Alberta? Because I have two. That EROS program, did it cost money up front? And secondly, I'll tell you my second question, can, can we just roll it out to other surgeries? Yeah, so absolutely cost money up front. So there was actually a proposal put in um, when we actually launched the program back in 2013. So there definitely were costs. And in fact, uh, to continue the further implementation, we've actually allocated more budget into uh, the rollout to other sites. So that's the first question. Um, the second one is absolutely can be expanded to other surgeries. Uh, what we're doing right now is just keeping it within the colorectal uh, surgery cases, but the absolute intent is to actually spread it to other, other groups. And in fact, um, uh, the patient that was profiled actually had made that very suggestion is why isn't, why isn't this happening with other surgeries, but absolutely. Questions? I just have a question with respect to um, the vision that's being developed by AHS. I think it's so important in terms of establishing um, goals and, st and standards and a vision. I wonder if you could speak to the process that you're going through in order to establish that vision. So we've been doing a lot of work over the last year to sort of update our vision. And um, so we've done a lot of stakeholder uh, engagement on this. We've actually asked our patients and families We've gone to our frontline clinicians, we've asked our leadership team. And so now that we're actually ready to embark on a vision rollout, we're actually wanting the rest of the, all the organization to partake in uh, a sort of a three week blitz to vote for the vision. So we've got a top five that we've kind of uh, landed on and we will be going out to the organization to ask every single person, all 120,000 people to vote on what is your favorite vision because fundamentally it's very important for all of us within AHS to feel like we own our vision going forward. So that's uh, the intent and we are going to be making an announcement about our final vision that we land on uh, at, towards the end of February. Any other questions for Verna? All right, uh, moving along, uh, we'll do our committee updates. Uh, the four committees met over uh, January. Our health, our uh, human resources committee didn't meet. They'll be meeting next week. Uh, so if we could just do an update on each of the committees and start with quality and safety, if Glenda could speak to that. Certainly, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Linda. So the quality and safety committee, this was our first uh, uh, time with the committee with all of this new board as part of it. Uh, you'll, you'll recall that our last board meeting we 
because we were new and as we're looking at the governance structure, uh, uh, had all board, board members be able to attend all of the committees. So this uh, meeting was held on January 7th. Uh, so, and as I mentioned, the committee members uh, included all of our board members and five external members. And then we have obviously the senior leadership team presented a number of items and attend the meeting as well. Uh, the Quality and Safety Committee, as we as new board members are learning, uh, assist the boards in overseeing, overseeing the responsibility for uh, creating the environment of good decision making for clinical operations that really puts an emphasis always on quality and uh, safety and builds a culture of trust for patients and families. Obviously, this is, this is uh, critical, uh, but also a culture of trust for healthcare providers so that they can come forward uh, and uh, share uh, opportunities that where they think improvements are possible. Um, so this is, it, it, it's a wide ranging, very obviously a, it was a full agenda. The first item we considered uh, was, uh, we learned and we were very keen on this practice of having what, what is called, I think by the, uh, the team, a, a patient safety moment to start off the meeting where there is actually a sort of a case study of something that has occurred um, and how it was handled. And so there was a, a patient safety moment that dealt with um, uh, total parent parenteral, I think, parenteral nutrition is how you pronounce that. Um, and it was about a situation where uh, 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 something had arisen where the staff found something that they could be doing better uh, and flagged it and they initiated the review and that led to actual um, changes in the way uh, some of these calculations were done. And I think there was a real um, appreciation by the committee members that the uh, commitment to improvement and the commitment to openness that enables people to come forward and make these improvements is really um, critical to ensuring continuous improvement in the organization. So we were very uh, impressed and commended management for uh, the culture that really you can see that um, is being fostered there. The second item we dealt with was the quality and healthcare improvement uh, process overall. There was an overview that was presented uh, uh, to the committee. Um, and so we looked at the structure. Obviously, this is a very large and complex organization, quality and uh, safety. Uh, it permeates everything we do. And so we had a bit of an overview about the, um, the mandate, how we achieve the objectives, what kind of structures and processes and how we organize within the organization to, um, to ensure that we are uh, putting appropriate quality and healthcare improvement focus. And then we as a board can oversee that through this uh, committee. Uh, the next item was on the patient first strategy. The, uh, Myrna mentioned it as well. Obviously, one of the key strategies for the organization. I think um, uh, we, uh, healthcare always strives to put patients first, but it obviously it can be very uh, easy in all of the complexity to be worried about the organization, the buildings, the providers, and obviously that notion of having a strategy that enables us to always remember that it's about. Um, uh, putting patients first, and there's a specific roadmap uh, saying it is not enough. I think the organization has put together uh, 19 identified approaches, and we got an update on how those are being um, rolled out throughout the organization. Uh, the next item was on performance measurement. Obviously, an organization as big and complex as uh, Alberta Health Services has a very robust uh, performance measurement regime. Uh, we were given an overview of how those fit together um, and how the framework of measurements where there are uh, national or on occasion international, but national comparators, how the data is um, used, how the measures are selected. Um, and with that, we also received an update on the current AHS uh, performance measures. Um, we, we discussed the fact that there's always an inherent lag with measures by the time a quarter finishes. It obviously takes time to gather the data and understand what occurred in that quarter and um, to uh, have the analytic uh, capacity to look at that. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the lag. I think because we were a new board, we ourselves, uh, uh, through the transition, probably caused a, a, a bit of a delay in this current posting of the um, Q2 measures, but they are being posted, as I understand it, today. So they will be uh, in the public domain. And uh, we are certainly committed to, uh, to dealing with the measures on an ongoing basis in a very, uh, in a very timely way. Uh, there was also a discussion of the HS workplace health and safety overview. We had a conversation, and, and as Linda mentioned, uh, 
we haven't yet had a uh, human resources committee meeting since the new board uh, was put in place. But we are, um, it is one of those topics that bridges really both human resources and quality and safety. Uh, but it was very useful to have uh, an understanding of the uh, uh, in addition, while we're trying to provide good health care and good health for uh, the for Albertans and for the public, there are, are issues about our own uh, workplace safety and providing good health environments for our staff and employees, and that was certainly uh, the focus of that report and uh, some of the strategies that are in at work there. Uh, we then had two updates on um, particular items. One was on the clinical information system. We've talked about performance measures, but obviously what underlies almost everything that happens in healthcare um, is data and information. And uh, so we got an update on some of the complexities, some of the challenges and the opportunities in terms of uh, uh, always updating and uh, working to have the best clinical information possible. And we also had an, uh, an update on the medication management risk report. So there had been a, um, an annual review of such uh, of a key area, medication management risk. And this has been um, uh, reviewed and we had a chance as a committee to uh, uh, to look at that report and ask questions about it. So our committee, the Quality and Safety Committee, is next scheduled to meet in um, in March, and we will uh, report back to the board uh, after that one uh, after that meeting. Thank you, Glenda. Anyone? Any questions? No. 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 That was great. Uh, so, David, would you like to speak to finance or to audit and risk? Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, the Finance Committee met January the 21st, and uh, the committee members include all of the board members and two external members. President and CEO is an ex officio member. Standing management attendees include the Vice President of Corporate Services and CFO, Chief Program Officer, Financial Services, Senior Director, Financial Reporting and Treasury, Chief Audit Executive, Internal Audit and Enterprise Risk Management. <clears throat> Finance Committee assists the board in fulfilling the financial oversight responsibilities of the board and in overseeing management's administration of AHS on the following matters. Financial risk management and compliance, financial sustainability, financial reporting, health and business planning, including operating and capital budgets, capital submissions, including facilities, equipment, and information management, information technology, borrowing and investments, and contracts and agreements. The committee reviewed and discussed the AHS Q2 Performance Agreement Action Update and Performance Measure Report for 2015-2016. Uh, Glenda referred to that earlier I, as well. Um, the document uh, includes the progress undertaken by AHS to meet its accountabilities as outlined in the 2014 to 2017 performance agreement with Alberta Health, as well as other performance measures commitments. The committee discussed the importance of alignment between the health plan, business plan, performance agreement, and operational plans. The committee supported the chair of the board submitting the action update and performance measure report for 2015-16 to the Minister of Health. Regarding 2016 and 2017 budget, the committee had a substantial discussion on this budget and the multi-year outlook. The committee received the budget overview and information on a priority setting basis, process, potential new investments and the capital budget. The committee provided feedback on these matters to management other than on the capital budget which was deferred to the next meeting. It's anticipated that the AHS proposed 2016-2017 budget will be submitted to the Minister of Health in late February or early March. With respect to the Calgary uh, Cancer Project, uh, the committee received an update. The project is proceeding and will be at the Foothills Hospital site. Alberta Infrastructure will be leading the project in consultation with AHS. The committee also received a brief update on the government's review of lab services and our next meeting scheduled to be February 24th, 2016. They'll proceed on then to the Audit and Risk Committee, which uh, uh, was held as well on January 21, 2016. The committee members include all board members and two external members. President and CEO is an ex officio member. 
standing management attendees include the Chief Audit Executive, Internal Audit and Enterprise Risk Management, Vice President of Corporate Services and CFO, the Chief Program Officer, Financial Services, and the Senior Director, Financial Reporting and Treasury, and the Director, Internal Audit. Individuals from the Office of the Auditor General also attend the meetings of the committee in their capacity as external auditors of AHS. Individuals uh, from KPMG attend parts of the meeting in their role as agents of the Office of the Auditor General to carry out the audit of AHS. The committee assists the board in fulfilling the oversight responsibilities of the board with respect to the following matters. Enterprise risk management and compliance, external financial reporting, internal controls over financial reporting, internal audit, and external audit. The Office of the Auditor General reviewed the HS audit plan for the year ending March 31, 2016. Now this plan had previously been provided to the Audit and Risk Committee of the Official Administrator. However, this meeting provided an opportunity for the Office of the Auditor General to review the audit plan with the new board members. In addition to reviewing specific audit items, the Office of the Auditor General addressed planned systems projects and audits. The committee was advised and supported management's review of the engagement process for and KPMG non-AHS consolidated financial statement and engagement services. The committee received and discussed the results uh, uh, of this audit of the processes used to produce publicly reported emergency department performance measures. The overall finding was that the processes are adequate. The committee was provided a status report on the implementation of outstanding internal and external audit recommendations as well as assurance on the effectiveness of management's implementation plan. The committee was presented with an introduction to enterprise risk management approach and processes. The committee was informed that ERM is a coordinated and systemic approach that assists AHS to identify and articulate risks and that it helps measure, prioritize and respond to risks that challenge AHS achievements of its strategic objectives, projects, initiatives and day-to-day -day operating practices. The committee received the results of the annual review of the business continu continuity management and emergency disaster management risks. Next meeting will be held February 24th, 2016. Thank you. Any questions for David on that? No? All right, the final committee that met was governance, and I'm going to report on that since at this point I'm the chair of that. Uh, the governance committee met on January 20th, and uh, the, the entire board are members of the governance committee, and that may last for some time. Uh, the main work of the governance committee, of course, is to try to set up the whole board structure. Um, uh, in order to make the board be as effective as it can through its committees. Uh, the other thing that the Governance Committee is doing is uh, performing as the search committee for the CEO. Often boards would just get a small group of, uh, of board members to sit on a search committee, but we're a small board and everybody wanted to participate, so we've sort of made the Governance Committee also the search committee. Uh, so one of the first things at our meeting was a, a presentation by our uh, Vice President of Human Resources along with uh, two of the partners from Boyden Global Executive Search. They presented us with a timeline for their search and, uh, and a position profile for the CEO and the board uh, members who were on the committee gave input onto that. Uh, the Governance Committee also looked at its own terms of reference as, a, as sort of a starting point. Uh, we made a few suggestions for change and I'm going to make a motion to approve those, uh, those terms of reference at this meeting now. We also looked at a, a very long document that had been put together um, in draft on the mandate of the board and the mandate and the roles of all the players in the governance of AHS. And uh, we spent a long time talking about it because uh, according to our legislation, we are required to sign off on this uh, roles and mandate document in agreement with the minister. We all have to sign off. After talking about it for quite a while, we thought that the document we saw was too, to use a term that I've learned since I've been on this board, granular, which really- There are 10 minutes remaining in this video conference session. Conference session. session. I'll talk fast then. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> granular just means too many details, and so we decided we would go back and try to draft a, a much simpler document, kind of a two-page thing that would really describe the board's relationship with the ministry, and so we'll do that at our next meeting. Um, Dr. Uh, you presented um, uh, a short explanation piece on uh, the vision, which you just talked about before, the development of the vision. And those were the subsequent matters we dealt with at the board. And we'll be meeting at the committee, I mean, and we'll be meeting again in February. So the one uh, motion that comes out of that committee meeting that I would put forward here, and I will read it in its entirety, won't I? But quickly, since we only have 10 minutes. Um, the board established their governance committee on December 1st. The committee met and proposed a draft terms of reference for board approval. So I move that the Alberta Health Services Board approve the Governance Committee Terms of Reference in the form reviewed and recommended by the Governance Committee with such non-substantive changes that management of AHS considers necessary or advisable and authorize and direct management of AHS to make such terms of reference available to the public through the AHS website. I so move. Someone like to second that? Glenda will second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. So now we actually have terms of reference for our board. And we will, the uh, other committees will be meeting, um, or the governance committee will meet next time and go through the terms of reference of our other committees. So hopefully maybe at our next meeting we'll have terms of references for all the committees and we can move along to do the work, not just worry about our terms of reference. So the final item we have is appointment to uh, trustees of health foundations. Uh, these candidates for the health foundations are actually chosen in their communities, they're vetted in their communities, and then our own foundation relations people do their own, do checks of these candidates. Uh, so now they've come to the board for approval, uh, and I would ask Hugh Somerville to deal with this matter. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think the appointment of trustees to the various health foundations is one of the positive duties of the board, something positive we can do. I move that the Alberta Health Services Board appoint or reappoint as applicable the following individuals as trustees to the foundations as indicated for the terms specified effective January 31st, 2016. To the Alberta Cancer Foundation, Dr. Matthew Parliament for a one year term. To the Bassano and District Health Foundation, Laura Lee Bell, Molly Douglas, Sheila Evans, Sue Harris, Marge Havens, Stuart Heron, Brian McGuire, Alana Magnuson, each for a three-year term. To the Brooks and District Health Foundation, Catherine Christensen, Holly Olivier Weber, each for a three-year term, and Barb Timeco for a two-year term. To the Bow Island and District Health Foundation, Michelle Lynn for a three-year term. To the Canmore and Area Health Foundation, Jack Van Deventer, Dr. Mike Wickham, each for a three-year term, and Roland Zelmer for a one-year term. To the Fort McLeod and District Health Foundation, Jamie Maria Lipa, Taylor Noga, each for a two-year term. To the Lac La Biche Regional Health Foundation, Jean Nudslin, Bryden Ward, Kalman Polterak, each for a three-year term. To the North Country Health Foundation, Wendy Jones, Cynthia Papworth, Loretta Sorensen, each for a two-year term. To the Stetler Health Services Foundation, Dr. Peter Bauer, Robert Cameron, Tom Campbell, Jack Hayden, Phil Holton, Sarah Halverson, Carol Eisman, Gregory Jackson, Shauna Jenkins, Doug McKay, Susan Peterson, Karen Phibbs, Debbie Pooley, Karen Cernecki, William Walland, each for a three-year term, to the Viking Health Foundation, Philip Brick for a two-year term, Diane Pouquet, Fred Ruziak, Ruzika, I apologize, for a three-year term, and to the Windy Slopes Health Foundation, Sylvia Nabnet, Maggie Olson, Carolyn Robbins, each for a three-year term. Thank you, well done. 
Would anyone like to second that? Marlis, all in favor? All right, carried. I think that's it. Uh, I, if there's no other business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. Brenda, you, all in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you all for attending.